Hello, my name is Dr. Philip W. Blair, and I'm here to talk to you about traumatic brain injury and CBD, or cannabidiol. Hemp-derived cannabidiol offers tremendous potential for preventing, treating, and recovering from traumatic brain injury. Um, I graduated from the United States Military Academy at West Point in 1972, went on to, do, to get a medical degree from the University of Miami, served uh, duty in Germany, in Italy, and was a combat physician in the Gulf War. I retired from the Army in 1996, and I've gone into disease management. During the last four years, I have been concentrating on the use of cannabidiol in clinical care, and I've had great opportunity to treat well over 2,000 patients in that particular process. Today, we're going to talk about traumatic brain injury, and I want to go over just a little bit about the spectrum of disease that we do see for traumatic brain injury. And it is truly a spectrum because it's dealing with um, not only the worst type of injuries, direct head injuries, but also blasts and concussion. One of the phenomena that we're seeing with football players is a chronic traumatic encephalitis as a result of repeated head injuries and concussions. This should be included in what we're discussing uh, here today. The burden of traumatic brain disease on our population, on our citizens, is absolutely huge. Uh, millions of citizens are affected by traumatic brain injury on a yearly basis, and there's billions of euros that are being spent towards the care, the direct care, uh, and thousands of euros on some of the single episodes, the, the worst cases. It's the leading cause of death for 15 to 44-year-old individuals, and it leads to disability and impairment uh, including, down the road, uh, dementia and Parkinson's disease. From the Centers for Disease Control in the U.S., we know that there are complications and high risk for a number of problems that are associated with traumatic brain injury, so that it's much more than just the basic injury and people surviving the basic injury. There's quite a bit of disability impairment and very high risk for many medical problems that ensue after a traumatic brain injury. Classically, we've looked at traumatic brain injury involving that focal damage where the blow to the head, the fracture of the skull, or the injury to, to the direct tissues that are involved. But there's much more going on because immediately there is a blood flow dynamic that ensues that involves an initial constriction and almost ischemic uh, level of blood supply to the brain as a protective mechanism. Uh, there is a reflow phenomena where the blood flow increases and that tends to lead towards edema and swelling of the brain when a, with a confined space, as we know the brain uh, is in within the skull cavity, then that puts pressure on the brain. Um, there are nerve cell damage uh, that is going on. And there's also an inflammatory component that follows from this acute injury. So this is a very complex system uh, that's going on. The conventional treatment right now is mainly is brain rest, putting uh, people into a coma, even using hypothermic efforts to lower the body temperature and reduce the demands on the brain, um, as well as using corticosteroids uh, to reduce the inflammation and mainly in the area of supportive, uh, taking care of the hemodynamics of the brain, supporting uh, the uh, overall body functions in many different areas uh, to get past this traumatic episode that leads to the therapeutic uh, recovery uh, that we are expecting. One of the features that we have not been uh, aware of until 1992 was a complex system called the endocannabinoid system. Uh, this is a entire complex uh, that is within us that we haven't really been aware of how it works within traumatic brain disease or many other diseases. In fact, the components of this system are quite complex, and I've listed off some of the different features. It encompasses both uh, ligands and uh, receptors, 
as well as right down to um, cellular metabolism and changes that are going on at a nuclear level and mitochondrial level is quite complex. It has the major purpose of maintaining homeostasis. Now, this system goes back to early and primitive animals that have occupied the earth uh, for millennia. Um, and it is quite complex within uh, humans as well as other, all other mammals. Now, we didn't realize that this was present in the body until 1992 when a number of pieces were put together to recognize this. Plenty of research is being done on it, but it really isn't sufficient for the clinical applications that we know should be there because the role for this endocannabinoid system is actually in modulating and regulating many of the other systems from the body, the neurotransmitters, the immunologic system, the hormone system is key and important that these uh, endocannabinoids are working with. Um, and it right down uh, to that cellular level uh, and controlling the gut uh, as well. So all of these systems are involved. When we look at <clears throat> brain injury, we want to know, well, where is the endocannabinoid system involved here? And this diagram depicts uh, some of the mechanisms and some of the actions of the endocannabinoid system that actually, that's actually regulating much of their response uh, and the reaction uh, that we have to traumatic brain injury and the phenomena that occurs afterwards. The harmful mediators, uh, the glutamate and the reactive oxygen uh, species that provide stimulus for uh, neuroinflammation um, and the excitotoxicity that comes from release of glutamate as well as the, the vascular changes, the vasoconstriction as well as the vasodilation that occurs some time after the acute injury. There's regulation also in, in the formation of new nerve cells and new nerve connections when they, they have been disrupted. There's also effects not listed here that have to do with the scarring formation that occurs within the brain is forming. The endocannabinoid system is vital and important for all of these processes. As long as it's working properly, we would hope that it would be functioning and maintaining our health and helping along recovery. Unfortunately, for so many diseases, we actually see an endocannabinoid deficiency uh, where there are abnormalities that occur that are long-term and very subtle and very deep. Here's a study that points out that after traumatic brain injury, uh, we see changes right down to the mitochondrial level where endocannabinoid receptors that are present, the type 1 receptors that are present within mitochondria, have an effect on changing the actual metabolism going on at that mitochondrial level. And it is has a close relationship to the death of individual neuron cells. So I want to talk to you about cannabidiol. Now, when the endocannabinoid system is working fine, that's great, but when it's deficient, when it's not responding, or when it needs a boost, such as in cases for severe traumatic brain injury, in fact, most types of traumatic brain injury, whether it's a concussion or a chronic uh, traumatic uh, a encephalitis, or, or it, it occurs as a, as a result of a major trauma from a fall or uh, an injury. <laughs> Cannabidiol is one substance that is extracted from hemp uh, that has no psychoactive properties, but it has enormous potential and protective properties. Now, cannabidiol, I want to distinguish this, is it, it is found in all of cannabis species, but I want to draw the distinction between marijuana, which contains significant amounts of THC, which are psychoactive, and hemp that contains more of the cannabidiol, and it doesn't have any of that psychoactive effect. In fact, it has healing and cognitive clarity effects. Now, marijuana specifically is psychoactive and in different concentrations can lead to a downregulation within, within this endocannabinoid system. Cannabidiol, on the other hand, actually leads to an upregulation of the endocannabinoid system and restoring balance within the body. CBD is healthy for the brain, it's safe, uh, and it's effective. 
Uh, CBD causes no significant adverse reactions, no toxicity, and there's only rare interactions with some drugs with, that are not severe uh, in any way. It has just effects in terms of uh, changing the levels of those medications, uh, and there hasn't been any significant adverse effects that have been reported. CBD restores the endocannabinoid system. It rebalances things so that the body can work more effectively at recovering and with resilience. This study emphasizes that CBD, when it's used within six hours after traumatic brain injury, within six hours, it reduced the ischemic area of the brain and the damage that was done. And as much as 60% of the neurons were able to recover uh, in spite of this severe event, even uh, using this as late as six hours. I think this is really important. Uh, although we don't have clinical evidence for this at the present time, I think the positive nature of this study really suggests that we need to be working harder on this, especially if it could impact uh, the severity of the damage that we see with traumatic brain injury. The effects of cannabidiol are right down to the mitochondrial level, where a lot of the action is taking place in a traumatic brain injury. Correcting at this level, but also in a global sense, the inflammation that's going on. I really wanted to emphasize here uh, how deep and how penetrating that CBD uh, can go in protecting the body um, from the injury and the damage from traumatic brain injury as well as stroke um, for these uh, types of um, uh, injuries and complications. Overall, CBD will stop inflammation. It reduces the actual number of inflammatory cells as well as the cytokines, the inflammatory substances that they generally uh, release. It restores neuromodulation. So we're talking about uh, glutamate and these neurotransmitters and that stimulatory effect that they have, excitatory, that leads to damage and destruction uh, for individual cells. It blocks um, and the hyperreaction and normalizes it. It promotes synaptic and um, e uh, normalcy uh, so that uh, we're not getting um, e excitability, but it's also actually promoting additional synapses and the formation of new nerve connections within the brain. It restores the blood-brain barrier, one of the key factors of damage that occur in traumatic brain injury is a disruption of this barrier, not a direct uh, destruction or damage, but actually an inflammatory and a reactive one. CBD actually restores um, much of that resilience and uh, impermeability of that barrier to prevent inflammatory substances from the plasma reaching the brain where it can stimulate additional inflammation. It regulates and upregulates the endocannabinoid system, putting it into a more balanced performance to advance healing and recovery. At the cellular level, we see CBD actually reducing inflammation within the cell, reducing the number of the amount of re reactive oxygen species um, that can stimulate a cell death. It enhances mitochondrial function, so actually modulates the metabolism of the cell, protecting it from that self-destruction that uh, happens all too often. It restores the cellular processes, whether that's uh, the folding of the proteins or uh, the normal function of those particular cells, uh, as well as the axons uh, that are providing the stimulation to um, and down uh, the neurons uh, and through the sheaths to stimulate other neurons. And of course, in all areas, it's preventing cell death. Well, what about the dangers of cannabidiol? Well, after years of work and years of uh, research, we've not found any significant adverse effects of using cannabidiol, even at high doses. It um, has been safe uh, and um, not causing any major problems. In this particular study, uh, it was uh, with as part of a comparative trial looking at Epidiolex, which was approved by the FDA in May of this year, 
um, it was found that cannabidiol showed very low abuse potential because there were no um, feel-good effects of cannabidiol. They were significantly lower than any of the other drugs that would be tested. In addition, cannabidiol administration had no uh, visible, observable effects on psychomotor uh, uh, behavior or their interactions. And the majority of adverse effects that, that were experienced were mild um, with, uh, and moderate uh, severity. So there was nothing significant uh, that was going on. No deaths were reported using a, a natural, using a cannabidiol um, that um, uh, came um, from these particular products. Now, during the last four years, I've been using CBD for a wide range of problems. And although I haven't had any acute uh, traumatic brain injuries that I've been involved with um, uh, on individuals, I can make a recommendation for people who have had traumatic brain injury that have occurred in the past, uh, whether that's uh, two weeks or two months or, or two years. Um, in uh, almost every case, I've seen dramatic improvement of many of the residual symptoms that people have had. Um, it's available in many different forms, and it can be used orally, rectally, uh, even vaporized or placed on the skin. And it has excellent absorption uh, from all of these areas. Although my preference is for a sublingual and a mucosal absorption, that certainly opens it up to the possibility of using uh, a rectal uh, approach for using cannabidiol. The standard tinctures that I see, a 30 milligrams appears to be a very effective uh, starting dose for the individuals. They typically get a response within a few minutes. We're not talking hours or days, we're really talking about immediate effects. And there are side benefits that go along with this in terms of analgesia, um, anti-anxiety effects, um, as well as muscle relaxation, uh, joint relaxation, and uh, ease of breathing and ease of movement. I want patients to adjust the dose very early to get the effects that they're looking for um, specifically and get control of their symptoms. A target dose of 30 to 60 milligrams per day is about right. And I expect them to uh, use this higher dose and then go on to a maintenance, whatever controls their particular symptomatology um, and keeps them at optimum performance. So let me go over this uh, uh, once again, talk about this huge burden of traumatic brain injury that we're facing, not only with the acute injury, but also the sequelae that follow with it. An endocannabinoid deficiency is common, but CBD addresses almost all of the pathways of traumatic brain injury. CBD is supported in preclinical studies, um, and the dosing is modest with fast results. There's no significant adverse effects, toxicity, or drug interactions uh, that has come out from the literature reviews in people who have been using cannabidiol. I think it offers a huge potential, not only for after an injury has occurred, but even pre-injury. Um, if you could anticipate uh, a high potential for injury, perhaps CBD use prior to that would be very beneficial in preventing uh, complications from it. And then uh, for use with uh, and at the acute response may be extremely beneficial in reducing the natural um, adverse reactions that, that tend to occur um, after a traumatic brain injury and the, the typical physiologic events that occur. And then in the recovery phase, using cannabidiol could be extraordinarily beneficial in advancing recovery and healing and preventing a lot of the complications that we see down the road. I've listed off some references for you and I welcome your questions. It's been a great pleasure for me to talk to you about traumatic brain injury and the use of cannabidiol in uh, preventing uh, and mitigating the damage that occurs with this serious problem. I think there's great potential for using CBD, and I hope that we can get started on uh, using it in clinical studies and using it in real applications as soon as possible, because I believe this the impact will be enormous with respect to lives uh, and recovery, as well as cost and preventing the huge expenses that are associated with it. Thank you again for listening to what I have to say.